So the setup behind me needs a makeover desperately, especially my computer desk area. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about how to transfer PC parts over to a new case. And we're going to do that with the NZXT H510i. Hey guys, Jonathan here with TechWiz Time, where I help you save time and money when it comes to gaming and technology. In this video, I'm going to be looking at transferring, like I said, my old PC parts into a new PC case. So enough said, let's shut down the old computer, we'll clean it up and we'll get it transferred across. Let's go. Okay, so for those interested, this old case here is a Fractal Designs case and I'll just open it up and we'll have a look at the dust that we've got inside here. Yeah, it's pretty dusty in there. So what we'll do, first things first, is we'll take it outside and we'll get it blown out. Okay, so it's not completely clean, but it's got most of that dust out of there. So what we'll do is we'll go back into the office and we'll start stripping it out. Okay, so now that we're back inside, what we'll do is we'll start uh, pulling apart the components and we'll get them cleaned up individually. So let's go. Now, I just wanted to point out the cable management here. I didn't do too bad of a job, but I'm guessing with the H510i from NZXT that I should be able to get a little bit better with the cable management. So yeah, keep that in mind and we'll come and see what it looks like when we're done. Goodbye, old case. I'm gonna miss you. <sighs> okay. Goodbye. So before going too much further, I'm just gonna clean up the motherboard here, but I wanted to explain the components that I'm using in my primary PC build. So the motherboard is an ASRock Z170 Extreme 7 Plus. So it's got three M.2 slots on board there, which is one of the appeals that I had way back when I purchased it. Um, the N.2 drives that I'm using are the Samsung 950 Pros and they're both 512 gigabytes. So if I wanted to, I could run it in RAID, but I pretty much, I use one for system and one for caching and so forth. So that's why I've got it set up like that. Now the CPU that I'm using underneath the cooler there is the Intel i7 6700K. It's not overclocked at the moment, but in this new build, I might actually look at overclocking it to get a little bit more life out of it. Um, the cooler that I'm using on top there is the NHD15, which is the Noctua cooler. Um, so that there is going to cool it in a pull orientation. So the air will pull from the front here, go all the way through, and there'll be a fan at the back here that will pull the air out of the case. So hopefully that'll keep the CPU cool enough inside the new case. And one other thing that I forgot to mention was the RAM. So the RAM I'm using are the G-Skill um, Trident RAM. So they're 16 gigabyte modules for a total of 64 gigabytes of RAM, which is the maximum you can have with this motherboard. I know newer motherboards can get 128 gigabytes. Um, that's not really something that I need with my build, but it will do for this one in particular. When it comes to power supplies, the one that I'm using here is the Corsair RM750i which is an intelligent, fully modular power supply. So I can plug in a USB there and actually get statistics on how much power the motherboard and CPU and all that are using. So yeah, really good power supply and it served me well for many years. 
So inside the actual case itself, I'm using the Elgato HD60 Pro, and this has got the in and out HDMI there. That is purely for capturing from say a Raspberry Pi or another PC, just so I'm not using that PC's CPU power to render video. And lastly, the GPU, this is the Asus Strix 980. So I know it's a little bit older. Um, it's not, definitely it's not a 2080. It's not a TI model either. So yeah, if, um, if there was one thing I'd like to upgrade with this system, it would be the GPU. But at this stage, I'm, yeah, I'm just starting out full time with YouTube. So I've got to take what I can. And this is the 980 GTX, so. Yeah, it does the job and that's all it needs to do at this point. Okay, so now that I've gone through the components, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start mounting these inside the NZXT H510i case. And while I'm at it, I'll also go through any pitfalls or anything like that that I come across and things that I like about the case as well, just so you're aware if you are looking to grab one for yourself. So before getting too far into this build, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap out the fans. Um, the two standard fans, are just standard fans and what I want to do is I want to add a little bit more RGB to this build so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the AER2 RGB fans from NZXT so I'm going to just remove these fans quickly now and replace them with those fans there all right won't be long okay so both air RGB2 fans and they're mounted inside the case I've cable managed, there's a little clip up there where I can cable manage the back fan and then the top fan goes straight out the back there. So I'll flip it around so you can see, well you can see the cable management there is pretty good. And then flipping it around, you can see here that I've used the channels in behind to route the fan cables as well as the RGB cable that goes to the primary one there. So that is, yeah, that's pretty well cable managed so far. So if, with that said, I'll, I'll keep going. I'll mount the power supply and then go from there. Actually, I'm not gonna mount the power supply. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these fans that were from the top and the back and I'm gonna mount them to the front. Flip this around again. So I'll mount them in here it's actually detachable from the inside. If you had a look at my previous review of the H200 or H210i, the front panel actually came off. In this one, it doesn't. So, looks like it's, yeah, riveted on there. It might actually come off. The top piece and the front piece are all one piece. So, yeah, I, I don't think that it does come off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this bracket here attach the fans there so they can pull cool air into the case, then these two fans will pull it out. So from the front will be cool, and then all the way through the back will be warm air going out. So let's do it. All right, so the two fans <clears throat> are attached in the front there now. I'm just tightening these up. I know the thumb screws I could just tighten them manually, but I like to make sure that there's going to be minimal vibration when it comes to the fans. So I just like to tighten them in with a screwdriver and that looks pretty nice there. So I'll start cable managing those two fans and keep going. All right, so that's looking fairly nice in there. The Cables just run down the side there underneath and then are connected by a three-way splitter, which is controlled then by the uh, smart controller version two. So fan one will be the two front fans, which I can control. Then fan two and fan three are the top and the rear fans. So that'll all be controllable there via this smart controller. Um, I will be looking at potentially putting more RGB in. I'll just see how I go, but this is the NZXT U2. So I will have a look shortly and see whether or not I want to include this. Um, it is magnetized, so it can just stick anywhere inside the case. 
I'll probably leave the drive bay in down the bottom there and install it there just so I've got a little bit more flexibility and it also gives me the option of adding another one, two, three, four RGB lights. So yeah, I will have a look and see how I go. Let's keep going and I'll install the power supply and then keep moving. All right, so I did decide to remove the three and a half inch hard drive cage. I'm not gonna be using those in this case at all. So I have removed it. And what I've also done at the same time is I've installed the underglow kit from my previous video as well. So that'll be the two RGB light strips there for underneath the case. And I will install the Hue 2 controller to control those separately, just in case I want to turn them off or anything like that if I'm doing something in the office. So, all right, let's install this one. Okay, so to avoid issues in terms of cable management with the motherboard, I'm going to install it now instead of the NZXT Hue 2 controller. So, okay, and that fits in quite nicely there. Okay, first issue that I've encountered is that the glass won't fit on with the fan on the Noctua DH15 outside like that. So there must have been more room in the Fractal Designs case to allow it to do that. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to rethink the fan positioning on the NHD15. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, so the solution was to use a 120mm Noctua fan on there instead of the 140 mil and that seems to work the glass fits on now properly which is great and whilst i've got the pcie cables here what i'll do is i'll install the gpu and keep going so one interesting thing while i was installing the gpu and the elgato was the bracket here for the vertical gpu comes off to allow access to these screws here to screw in your pci cards now, whilst they don't have thumb screws on the PCI slots, I can understand why with this bracket here. So it's purely because people wanting to mount their GPUs vertically to show off their bling and so forth, um, that's, that's what's stopping having thumb screws on the PCIe slots. So yeah, just, just something curious. And I also like the idea of how, yeah, that whole panel came out so that way you could access those ports. Another little trick that I've just done is with the PCIe cable there, I've just cable tied around behind to keep that cable away from the Strix logo. That's purely just a cosmetic thing, but in saying that, there we go, a little bit tidier again. And it's nice and firm now. So another tip for system builders or enthusiasts out there that are building their first PC, if you've got spare brackets left over from your PCIe slots after you've installed your GPU and so forth, you can store them, well, especially if you've got an NZXT case, in the box there, you just throw them in, and you've got them safe there if you ever want to change cases in the future. Now, all things considered, that's the cable management there at the rear done, and it looks pretty tidy, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I'll switch around to the front so I can show you the front, and then, yeah, you can see what you think there. Okay, so there's the front and you'll see that the cable management is pretty nice. Like you can't really see apart from obviously this one here, um, but the rest of it looks fairly not nice and neat and tidy. So you, you can see as well when putting on the glass that there is enough clearance there now for the cooler. I'll take the plastic off shortly, but first what I've got to do is I've got to change the desk around so I can fit this new case on it.
Okay, so as you can see by that video I've just shown you now, the PC transfer has been complete and I've cleaned up the desk and it's looking pretty nice. So what you'll see behind me is the NZXT H510i case with all my original components transferred into it. I've then got two Acer monitors. They're both 28 inch 4K monitors. One of them is in the horizontal position and one is in the vertical position. Position. <laughs> now the reason for the vertical monitor is because when I'm working, I wanna be front central to the desk and that is with the horizontal monitor. With the vertical monitor off to the side, I can do things like read the news, throw programs over there that I'm not currently using and also do some coding. So having this clean space now means that my mind is a little bit clearer as well. And also the other thing with the PC case being on the desk now, instead of being on the floor, it's gonna gather less dust. Now you probably would have seen earlier in this video when I blew out the existing case or the dust that came out of that, that is because it was sitting underneath the desk. So for a cleaner system, I've opted to put it onto the desk itself instead of on the floor. So with that said, I did have a couple of troubles, actually just the one major trouble with the NZXT H510i case and that was with the Noctua NHD15 cooler. Now it's got two 140 millimeter fans on it and because of that second 140 millimeter fan needing to be recessed out a little bit because of the RAM modules, that's where it came into a little bit of an issue with the glass side panel. So I had to think about it for a little bit and I ended up swapping it out for a 120 millimeter Noctua fan just to keep with that Noctua look. So if I had any money to throw at this build, I would have actually looked at getting the NZXT Kraken X62, since that's a 280 millimeter cooler, all in one liquid cooler actually, and that would fit on the front there. So where I've installed the two 120 millimeter fans on the front, that bracket, it comes out, and I could have installed the X62 Kraken on there. And whilst I was at it, I probably would have swapped out the Kraken fans and replace them with 140 millimeter Air 2 RGB fans. Just to give it that little bit more RGB goodness. Speaking of RGB, if you haven't checked it out already, I did do an ultimate RGB build for 2019 and that's up in the cards above or it'll be down in the description below if you wanna check that out. There was so much RGB in that. There was RGB RAM, RGB M.2s, RGB strips, RGB fans, RGB case. RGB motherboard, Whew, it was just, it was full RGB. So if RGB is your thing, check it out. All right, so back to talking about the case, what are some of the things that I actually liked about it? Uh, I love the fact that the cable management was so good and that's just one of the things with the NZXT cases is the fact that they do have good cable management in the back, especially for routing the power and the PCIe cables. Now, because this is the I model of the H510i or the H510 series, I should say there are two LED strips included with this case. One of them is up underneath the, the top lid there um, towards the front of the glass panel and the other one runs behind the white strip that runs down the middle of the case or towards the front of the case there. So that just gives it a little bit more RGB flare. And that's all controllable by the Smart Version 2 controller on the back of the chassis. The only other thing that I probably will have to look at in the future is a motherboard that supports that type E mainboard header for the USB type C connection on the front panel. Now my ASRock Z170 Extreme 7 Plus doesn't have that connection or header on the motherboard itself. And I don't have any on my X570 boards that I've got here either. So if you know of any motherboards, it's either Intel or AMD that do support the USB type C, the type E header, not the normal 3.1 with all the pins, but it's a slightly smaller one, then make sure you leave me a comment down below and let others know too. Okay, so thanks heaps for checking out this build and this case transfer from one case to another. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you wanna help support this channel, you can in a few ways. One of them is to subscribe to this channel and also to hit the bell notification icon so you can get notified whenever I release new videos. Another way is to help share this video on social media platforms like Reddit, Facebook, or Twitter. And lastly, another way that you can help support us is through Patreon, and we'll have a link down in the description below or on the screen in the end cards right now. So a huge thanks for all your support over the years, and especially if you've gotten this far in the video. Usually it's only about 5% of viewers that get this far, so if you are one of those 5%, you know, a huge thanks. Thank you so much for your support. And once again, thanks for watching this video, and as always, Imagine, Learn, Create.